here to discuss the previous year questions. So this question is from grade 2022 session 1. The question is from ICMB. So let us see what is the question. An engine running on a standard motorcycle has a displacement volume 250 cm cube and a clearance volume 55.7 cm cube. The pressure and temperature at the beginning of the compression process are 100 kPa and 300 Kelvin respectively. Heat transfer during constant volume heat addition process is 800 kJ per kg. The specific heat at constant volume is 0.718 kJ per kg Kelvin and the ratio of specific heats at constant pressure and constant volume is 1.4. Assume the specific heats to remain constant during the cycle. The maximum pressure in the cycle is and kilopascal we need to calculate. So let us first plot the auto cycle as uh, we all know auto cycle is known as constant volume cycle because heat addition and heat reduction takes place at constant volume. So let us first plot this process on PV diagram. So let us go into each state. Let us say one, two, three, four, five different states of this particular process. As we all know, first there will be suction, then compression, then constant pressure heat addition, sorry, constant volume heat addition, right, and then constant volume heat reduction. Uh, this is power stroke. Suction, compression, expansion, and exist. So, this is how you are having your auto cycle on PV diagram. So now, if you see the given data from the problem statement. So now, if you see the given data from the problem statement. Here, what is given is, uh, displacement volume is given as 250. Uh, centimeter cube so displacement volume is nothing but swept volume so vs is 250 centimeter cube then the clearance volume vp is given as 35.7 centimeter cube now initial pressure and temperature is given as p1 is equal to 100 kilopascal and temperature T1 is given as 300 Kelvin. Then uh, the constant volume heat addition is given as 800 kilojoule per kg, right? And then specific heat at constant volume is given as 0.71 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. And this uh, ratio of specific heats gamma is given as CP and PV that is given as 1.4. Now, uh, the specific heats are remaining constant during the process, right? And we need to calculate the maximum pressure. If you see in this cycle, maximum pressure will be at point 0.3 or state 3. So, you can see here in the cycle at, at this particular point it will be higher so you need to calculate EP. so if you see from the given data uh, you can see that uh, here this ratio this uh, compression ratio is 
nothing but v1 by v2 right so v1 is here right and v2 is here right so this is a swept volume and here this is clearance volume right so v1 by v2 you can write as vs plus vc by vc so it is nothing but 1 plus vs by vc so if you try and solve it because vs and vc both are given right so it will be 2 by 35.7 plus 1 so it will almost come around 8 right so once you get this, then from uh, this particular adiabatic process, this process 1, 2 is adiabatic process, similarly process 3, 4 is adiabatic process. So in adiabatic process, we know the relation between temperature and volume is T2 by T1 equal to V1 by V2 plus 2 gamma minus 1. So T1 is given, so you can calculate T2 because you know what is R V1 by V2, right? So, T2 is 300 into R plus to gamma minus 1, gamma is 1.4. So, this will give you T2 equals to 689.2 Kelvin. So, once you have T2, then from the data given of that heat addition at constant volume, you will be able to calculate T2 because QV is equal to CV T3 minus T2. So here QV is known that is 800, CV is known that is 0.7 T3 you need to calculate, T2 you have calculated as it is T2. So from this T3 will be equal to 1803.426 Kelvin. Right. So now once you have uh, this T3 with you, then what you need to calculate is P2, right? Because if you have P2 uh, with you, right, and then T3 with you, then T2 you have already calculated. So once you have this P2, T2 and T3, you will be able to calculate P3. Why? Because in process 2, 3, it is a constant volume process, right? So, as it is constant volume process in your that equation PV is equal to MRT, if volume is constant, then P will be directly proportional to T, right? So, you will be directly able to calculate P3 from T3, T2, and P2. So as you have already calculated T2 and T3, you also need to calculate P2. So we know that P2 by P1 is equal to R raised to gamma. Because a uh, process 1, 2 is a diabetic process. P1, V1 raised to gamma is equal to P2, V2 raised to gamma. So from that, you can write P2 by P1 is equal to R raised to gamma. So you can calculate P2. Because P1 is given as 100. So 100 into 8 plus 2, 1.4. So it will give you P2 as 1837 0.92 kilopascal. So now, once you have the, all this data, that P3, then P3 can be calculated right from this relation. So this P3 equal to this P2 which you have calculated one is 37.92 into T3 that you have calculated as 1803.426 divided by T2 and that is 689.22 so when you calculate it will come around 4809 0.136 kilopascal. Right. So you can write your answer here. Right. Round off to the nearest integer as it is mentioned.
right you need to round off to the nearest integer so that is 4809 kilo pascal thank you